Um, I won't take half an hour. There's one thing I wanted to pick up on. I'm, as you probably gathered, I'm quite into practical things. Um, it's really useful to talk about all the strategy, which is really important. One of the things that came out of the state of the sector research um, was the need development support for local organisations. Um, now, this isn't a replacement to what I think is one of the most important things, which is a personal relationship. We've talked about the relationship we have with someone um, is pretty critical to anyone you support. That said, in the context of local charities, um, there is clearly a place for online resources. And one of the key things from the state of the sector report um, was how many people in the sector are using online resources. So historically, they would pop into HBOS and say, I need help with the constitution, or they pick up the phone. A lot of people in the sector, uh, as won't be surprised to you, are looking at online resources. And we, in Herefordshire, with your help, we, we've developed a practical resource. And the idea of this is just to really raise awareness again with you all about this. Um, it's called a confidence framework. What it's got, it's got six components of work, which is a resource that you can all access. Um, and you basically register, you can work through it, um, put in the name of your organisation and it covers six areas of work and I just want to raise it with you all because maybe there's some aspects of this that you might find useful. Um, it's not a replacement to picking up the phone to us and the, the talk community development officers by the way but if you've got needs within your organisation this might be a useful starting point. Um, so it looks at governance how your organisations run. If you tick no, um, it gives you a list of resources that you can use. Very interestingly, Claire Bowery from the Eveson Trust said there's a huge number of organisations that applied that have to provide their governing document. And a shockingly number <laughs> said that they, were, they didn't send in their up-to-date constitution. Very interesting. If that's the first thing that fund sees is your uh, constitution or your governing document, it's not up to date. Um, I find that quite enlightening because sometimes these things are things we haven't looked at for years. And it's always good for us to go and uh, have a look at them. So um, it talks about roles on the board. Uh, a lot of you here will know these things and they're, they're fundamentals to the running of your organisation. but. Um, the roles of different um, uh, people on your board. And again, it's a useful checklist. Uh, it doesn't matter how long we've, HVOS, we've just done a board development session with our trustees and looked at our skills audit. Suddenly, you, you think you know your organisation, but until you actually go through some of these things, you can see some gaps you never thought were there. So um, there's a couple of specialisms that suddenly, over two years, have, have gone from our board. Now, someone's retired, and suddenly you think, actually, yeah, where is our legal expertise on this board? Or where is the person with the financial oversight? So some of these resources will help you perhaps identify this and what that good governance looks like around meetings and other things. A useful part of the this resource is a section on policies. So there may well be some things here that um, <coughs> you might find useful. So there's some templates around some of these things that will help you um, run your organisation well. We find that lots of people uh, were really guilty of this, perhaps and we need to look at it within this partnership. We, um, we often start with a blank sheet of paper and actually embark on a huge amount of work that in lots of cases is unnecessary. Sat there in this room, brilliant um, expertise, and you know, rather than start, where do I start with the health and safety policy? There's some stuff on here. Again, we've got specialists in the people in this room that could help with some of these things probably better than our sample templates. Again, things around confidentiality, I think there's a policy here, and other things around GDPR. So I'm just trying to highlight to you some aspects that um, 
uh, men you may find useful. Again, I think there's a policy here around lane working, which again, massive issue for all of us cross sectors. You know, some good principles that don't just sit within your health and safety policy, but sit within, you know, how we keep each other safe, particularly in rural areas when people in the sector are out and about at unsocial times. Just again, there's some information sections on financial controls, not only some good guidance about the things that we need to put in place. Um, but, but also, um, you know, how you, how you might improve um, what you're doing. Um, and as we've talked about here, volunteering, I think uh, that, that state of the sector research identifies over one in three people in this county regularly, formally volunteering um, at least once a month. So by my records, that's over 60,000 people in this county. So it's pretty um, integral to, to what we do in terms of the policies and procedures around that. And again, there's a list of all sorts of other policies about um, what you've got, what you might need, um, and legal requirements to you know, basic stuff around public liability um, and risk assessments. And critically, um, a lot of organisations are currently looking at where do we sit. We've heard about um, the financial challenges, lots of people reviewing uh, strategic planning, business planning, some resources here for you around that, um, and networking. So, I won't go into them in detail. A report is produced once you submit it. Um, we can send that to you with the support findings, and then hopefully it's so either a case of uh, you feel comfortable that you can go and source those things or you can go to other points of contact. So the idea is we're trying to build the capacity of the sector, not just from that individual relationships, but other things that you can go to, be it talk community officers. Um, it does strike me from what Mike said, um, that phrase of sense of team sticks with me and we do need to all break out of Will from HVOS, Christine from Healthwatch. What, what can we all do around... I know it's difficult, but this sense of one team, I could see in quite a visual person, but I could see in my mind not just the description of this PCN network, but a, a, an area around communities that we're all part of, perhaps more accountable to, um, or being, you know, bringing our resource to, you know, perhaps we could go there, we could all be there, and this would be part of that integral approach. Um, the one final thing. I was going to say, and it's it's in the title, and I'm, I'm very happy to be challenged on it, not challenged, but I think we need to look, explore how this moves forward. But we've described this as a confidence framework. Uh, by that, we, we've seen this as something that supports groups out there in the community. Uh, Christine and I and others have had conversations, I think Karen's been to your PCN um, events about this. but. It's very much seen about these groups are on the ground. How do we help them do what they do well? There is a conversation um, about assurance. And so people across the system, and it's probably much more than the talk community directory, um, saying, OK, there's this, there's this vibrant, active sector doing great work. We know there are really good organisations, but is there an assurance tool that we could use? So if we are a social prescriber, we know that that organisation is at that level that I feel I could refer to. Now, um, this tool doesn't do that. It might be that we need to have conversations about how we can develop that, and it will probably link to all sorts of other things the talk community review, the work that's going on around the talk community directory, um, and that is sort of an aspiration for me that that would be a real mature um, outcome for us, maybe not now, but within a few years, where we could see how we're all working together that not only gives confidence to groups, but gives assurance to us all. Um, I have very mixed views about that, of course, as you'd expect as an advocate for the voluntary sector, because it must retain its independence. 
for all the reasons that Zoe said and others, these specialisms need to be respected, they need to be seen to be independent, they, that way they are trusted, they're well informed by people, customers as Ray described them, um, people who use our services. So it's, it's a bit of a dilemma about how we work through that for me. Um, I think I'll probably leave it there to say we've got a resource, we need to build it on, um, we need to see how we assure it in the future, um, and I hope, um, just before you nod off before lunch, I'll at least give you a little reminder of to what that framework's about and what we've been practically working on together.